Hello and welcome to IS200C, or ICS200 as it's sometimes referred to, Basic Incident Command System for Initial Response. This course is designed for people just like you, EMTs, firefighters, law enforcement, and others who might be among the first on scene during an emergency. So my goal here for this presentation is to be clear, engaging, foundational, with prompts to think about a field application that really will prepare you best for the exam so that you can get your ICS 200 certificate, but you know, with a little bit of uh, flavor so you're prepared for the real world application as well. Let's get into it. You don't need to be in charge of a scene to benefit from this training. So don't look at it that way. You want to fit into the picture well. Whether you're directing traffic at a crash site or transporting patients after a fire, understanding how ICS works helps you operate safely, efficiently, and as part of a coordinated response. The Emergency Management Institute developed this IS-200C basic incident communication system for initial response in collaboration with a few departments so that everybody's on the same page. Some of them you might have heard of, like the USDA and the Coast Guard and FEMA, which puts on this presentation. But we have the U.S. Fire Administration's National Fire Programs Branch, National Wildlife Coordinating Group, and a couple more as well. So this course meets the National Incident Management System, NIMS, baseline training requirement for ICS 200. By the end of this course, you'll understand how ICS functions in the early stages of an incident and how you'll fit into the larger structure. We'll explore some key concepts in ICS, like how authority is delegated, who does what, what tools are used to manage everything that's going on, and we'll apply that knowledge in a practical scenario at the end. A couple courses, really hope you stick with us because after all of this info, you can go online, take the course, take the test, pass it, and receive your certificate. If you're new to emergency services, this will give you a strong foundation in how the big picture response happens. If you're taking this course in a classroom setting or in the live session, um, this would be a great time to introduce yourself. If you're at home, no problem. So let's quickly go around first and everyone should say what your name is, what your role or background is, or what you're studying for, and have you ever responded to a scene, even in training, that included some of uh, this ideology, if you're familiar with it already, or that badly needed it. Whether you're brand new or already riding along, your experience matters. This course builds your confidence to act within an organized emergency response. So take a second and think first. If you're at home, pause the video, think for yourself, maybe write it down. What do you hope to get out of this course? Maybe it's to understand how all the moving pieces of an incident fit together. Maybe it's to learn how not to get lost in the chaos. Whatever it is, hold on to that goal and we will get back to that later. So what are you getting from me? Well, we really hope our goal in this course is that you stay curious, you participate actively and especially in the scenario discussions, even if you're watching at home, pause the video, give yourself a second to think about everything that's going on and stay open to new ways of thinking that you might either hear from me in the presentation of this course or from other people in the class as you collaborate with them in some of the scenarios. The more you engage with the content, the better prepared you'll be when you're out there for real. Once you're on the job, you might find yourself informally brainstorming with your partner or crew different aspects of 
incident management and uh, different scenarios. And sometimes, you know, we say things that are a little bit ridiculous. And, you know, one on the surface level might call this immaturity. But I really think there's a purpose there because by coming up with these ridiculous scenarios sometimes, especially as we're fatigued, late nights, sitting on the ambulance, we come up with some pretty creative solutions. And, you know, getting the juices flowing and strategizing this way actually does keep us sharp, keep us in good practice so that when we really do have to brainstorm to solve a national crisis, we're already very familiar. We're already very comfortable. This brainstorming, circulating ideas, and being open to, uh, you know, what our friends have to say. So this course is broken down into eight core lessons, plus a final summary. A little bit longer than ICS 100 if you did that already. If you didn't, go and take a look at that one. It's nice and quick. Each builds on the last, leading you toward a realistic incident response scenario. And so one of our uh, last few lectures is just a big scenario. So if you're a visual learner, look at what we have here. Um, this structure is built to help you succeed. And that goes the same for people who learn by doing. Um, I, I really like this course because of its scenarios. Um, really helps immerse yourself into the material. So this one is the course overview. The next one we'll get into incident command, unified command, delegation of authority, functional areas, incident briefings, flexibility, transfer of command, and then we'll get into our activity. If you're watching this online, treat it like a real class. Please do us that favor and do yourself that favor too. Give yourself breaks if you need one, take notes, hit pause and reflect if you need it. And remember, success in this course means that you must participate and pass the final exam with at least 75%. The link to the FEMA site with the exam will be below. If you don't have a FEMA student ID, you will need one of those, but hopefully at this point you already do because you took ICS 100. You're likely also going to complete a quick evaluation at the end to help improve this in future courses. And so I appreciate you taking that part seriously. So here's a look at the roadmap. Because this video is online, it may not look exactly like this, but typically what we have is a two day session with unit one and two in the morning of day one, three and four afternoon, six in the morning of day two, and then seven, eight, nine in the afternoon session. We'll start with small ICS fundamentals and gradually scale up into the bigger, more complex response structures. By the end, you'll be able to step into an incident with the mindset of a professional responder. Not just someone reacting to the chaos, but someone who is contributing to the solution. So, just a reminder, to pass, you'll need to complete all the lessons, take the final exam, score 75%. And yes, you can get a FEMA certificate. Um, with what you're learning here, but you will need to do the exam through FEMA's website. So after studying all the material here and looking at the study guides and all that good stuff, log in and take the final exam. You'll get the certificate and that's something you should definitely include in your future job applications or continuing education files. There are some CEUs that you will get from passing the final exam and many uh, jobs actually require that you have uh, four basic FEMA courses. This is one of them. ICS 100, ICS 200, 700 and 800, which include NIMS. And so take it seriously. When you get that certificate, drop it in a file, save it for a while. 
So let's begin with an overview of ICS and NIMS. This, for now, may sound like uh, this alphabet soup of um, different uh, mnemonics and three-letter uh, words, but trust me, the foundation of everything you'll experience in this coordinated incident response. Whether it's a car crash, wildfire, multi-casualty incident, you'll hear people refer to ICS roles, incident action plans, and unified command. These are important things. This lesson here lays the groundwork for all of that. And you might, you know, hear me say uh, car crash and roll your eyes. Oh, do we really need this for a car crash? And the answer is yes. Some of the best captains I've ever worked for will treat even a small multi-vehicle collision where there's likely not to be any injuries as an incident so that we can all get into the practice of communication system, different departments, organization, all of that stuff. And it works really well to keep us in practice and remind us of the terms we should be using and how we go from just a regular 911 call to now a coordinated response. So this is why I like it, take it seriously. ICS is the framework used nationwide to manage emergencies. It's flexible, scalable, and works whether you're managing a small fender bender or a hurricane response. As an EMT, you might not be the one in charge, but knowing how ICS works means you'll know where to plug into that situation, who to report to, and how to communicate effectively. ICS is not just standardized organizational chart. It's an entire management system. So why does ICS matter? Because when emergencies happen, no one has time to argue about who's in charge or where we should park resources. And ICS removes the guesswork. Everyone knows their job. Everyone speaks the same language. And that means better outcomes for patients and responders alike. Think back to a large incident you've heard of, hurricane, mass casualty, wildfire. Those efforts were managed using ICS. The use of ICS isn't optional. It's required for incidents involving federal funding or coordination. Presidential directives made ICS and NIMS the national standard for emergency response. If you want to work in EMS fire law enforcement, this is part of the job. And I've even seen it be a requirement for positions like safety representatives at theme parks or ski patrollers at a ski resort. Very important to have this foundation. And in my opinion, even more important to refresh it every couple years, or every year, really, if you don't use it that much, so that you don't fall so out of practice that you end up asking so many questions and can't fit into the ICS system if an incident were to occur. NIMS makes the system that makes ICS possible. It's the umbrella framework that ensures we're all playing by the same rules. NIMS gives responders from EMTs to FEMA a consistent approach to managing incidents of all types regardless of scale. If you're nerdy like I am, you can look at this National Incident Management System um, publication, but you know what, we'll save that for later. We're almost done with this video and I'm trying to get you into video two. NIMS is built on principles like chain of command, unity of command, clear communication, manageable span of control, and modular organization. These things are hopefully nothing new um, for those of us with some military law enforcement or otherwise first responder background, but that's why these things are designed that way. They fit in well to what we might already know and for good reason. These teams will come up throughout this course and you'll see how they affect your day-to-day decision-making in the field, 
especially for a prolonged response like ongoing large-scale wildfire, hurricanes, tornadoes, etc. So we will publish a NIMS management characteristics overview that will be below. Study guide, click on it, take a look. It'll be super helpful, especially as a nice little refresher right before you take the exam. And something that's good to have in your back pocket um, because, you know what? You never know when you might need a refresher on this stuff. In the classroom section here, we will play the video online. We'll just get into the next one. So if you're watching this online, um, pause where you need it and maybe write some things down uh, to do a self-paced reflection. We'll do a quick check in here. Can you remember any of the NIMS management characteristics from ICS 100 without looking at your notes? If you can't, or if you're just in study mode and your mind is just trying to take in as much as you can, here's a nice reminder. Pause the video and jot down what you remember. If not, look here. Common terminology was important, right? We don't want all these 10 codes. We want everybody speaking the same. English language, and we want people using simple words that everyone will understand. Unified command, management by objectives, modular organization, incident action planning, accountability, facilities and locations. Hopefully all of these things uh, are starting to be remembered. Hopefully they're starting to sound familiar um, as we build on that in this course. If you want to dig deeper, FEMA's NIMS Resource Center and Presidential Directive links are included here. You'll also find downloadable PDFs um, here below, um, but also on the NIMS Resource Center um, with glossaries and other things that can help you, you know, on the job or help you study. So let's do this activity here. See how much you remember. In person, we're going to divide into table teams. You'll have three minutes to write down as many of the 14 features. Um, select a spokesperson, and then we'll go. We'll make this nice and easy. And we're almost uh, wrapped up for lesson one. We've covered the purpose of ICS and NIMS, how they help organize response, what the course will teach you. ICS may sound abstract at first, but quickly become second nature once you understand your role within it. We're really trying to make it nice and simple, and I really hope you see it that way too. So great. You have completed the course overview lesson here. The next lesson will describe how ICS is incorporated within the overall emergency management program. Next up is incident command and unified command. Thank you so much for watching. We'll look at what happens when you arrive on scene and how leadership is established. And you know, if you're watching at home, uh, think about a time when you were part of a team or even just observing one. What made leadership effective or, or ineffective for that reason um, in that situation? Drop your answer in the comments and I'd love to hear your experiences and get a discussion going there. Any answers, good ones, bad ones, middle ones, really help drive discussion in our community and is good for us. And so let us know what you think because looking at new perspectives can be super helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one.